Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make an in the hoop coaster. Now this was a design that I bought off the internet, I'll leave a link in the description box below and there'll also be an accompanying blog post and it will be on there as well. The design I, ch I chose was quite a simple design and it comes basically with various sizes of coaster that you can make for all the different types of embroidery machines. In the file, there's files where you can just stitch one coaster out at a time, or if you've got bigger hoops, you can do two at a time. Now, my Janome Memorycraft MC9900 comes with two hoops. There's the 14Q, I think it's called, and the 20Q. So my smallest hoop, I think they say, I think they call it a five and a half by five and a half. It's actually bigger than that. And that's what I'm going to be using today. So I'm going to be stitching out one design in this one hoop. Um, the, the, the pattern also comes with some embroidery stitching with it. And there are three different designs. And then there's a plain one. So you can basically make the coaster and have it plain with no stitching on it at all and then that way you could use something like heat transfer vinyl cut something with your scan and cut and iron it onto the front but i've chosen one of the designs and that's what i'm going to show you how to do today so the first thing it tells me to do is to hoop up some tear away stabilizer so this is my smallest hoop i've got a piece of stabilizer and i'm just going to pop the top bit in. Now it's about two years since I did any machine embroidery so if I'm doing anything wrong please forgive me and I'm sure that there are you know far more experienced machine sewers out there than me but this is what I'm doing. So the first step tells you to hoop up your piece of tearaway stabiliser and then it tells you to stitch out a placement line. So I'm just going to move the camera so it's back on to the sewing machine. I'm going to lift up the foot and pop this onto my machine. And if you want to know how this machine converts from a regular sewing machine to an embroidery machine, then if you go to the sewing playlist here on my YouTube channel. I have done a video recently showing how it converts from a regular sewing machine into an embroidery machine. So I'm going to go to this file because that's where I've got my stitch design and I'm going to go into my USB stick and find the coaster and here it is. It's telling me that the, the hoop, the pattern is on the hoop 14a which is 140 by 140 millimeters so i'm going to say okay i'm going to put the foot down and i'm going to stitch out the placement line which is step one of this four uh, i think it's four step is it? yeah four color changes and i'm stitching this out all in one color so the placement line the embroidered design the finishing stitch is all being done in one color but I think you more experienced sewers will know for sure. But I think that the reason that this is in four colours is because it needs to stop after each colour for you to do the next step. So I'm going to do step one. So I'm going to click start. Just going to make sure that it's all okay with the, the loose piece of thread and it's stitching out my placement line. Okay, so it's telling me to lift the presser foot and I can see the blue stitch outline. So now it tells me that I need a piece of wadding and a piece of 
top fabric. So here's my wadding, it's actually quite thick and here's the fabric that I'm going to use for the front. I'm going to be using plain white for the back because I've not got enough, I don't think, of this fabric or at least I couldn't find it to make four coasters all the same with the front and back. So I've got four pieces out which I'm hoping to make four coasters with this pattern on the front and I'm going to use a plain white on the back I think. But these would be great, easy and simple projects to make for somebody that's got, you know, if you want to give a birthday present to somebody but you don't want to spend a lot of money, you, could, you don't have to make them all the same. You could make four coasters but all different fabrics and just tie them together in a ribbon or make a box for it and, and give it as a gift. So it tells you to put this now over this stitched placement line. So I'm going to slide it under the foot. I'm just going to lift the foot up a little bit more. And I just need to make sure that this fabric now goes over the edge of this stitch line all the way round. I think it can just come this way a little bit more. So I'm going to put the foot down, bring you back and press start. Now it does say in the instructions that you can tape this down. I can't find my tape. As I said, it's about two years since I've used this embroidery machine. I have done a couple of projects recently on my channel, but I don't know when you'll be actually seeing this video. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to press start, keep my fingers out of the way and just hold the fabric And I think it'll be okay now. I think it'll all stay in place. So that's step two, if you like. So the placement line was step one. The, the wadding and the tack down is step two. It's telling me to raise the presser foot. I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go straight on to the decorative sewing. So this is where it's going to do one of the embroidery patterns. And as I said, in this file I bought there are three patterns and one that is completely plain in the middle and I think that would be good to you know incorporate your scan and cut and maybe cut something in heat transfer vinyl or put some kind of decorative design on the front that way which might be another project but for now I'm going to see how we go with this Okay, so it's finished. It says raise the presser foot. So that's what I'm going to do. So in the next part of the instructions, it tells you to get another piece of your decorative fabric and another piece of wadding. But the wadding I'm using is actually, although it's quite compressed, it's quite thick. So I'm just going to just use one. So all I'm going to do is put my piece of backing fabric down now over this stitch line and I'm using a plain fabric so it doesn't really matter you know which way I put this down but if you've got a pattern fabric you know if you were using two pieces of like the blue here it would go pretty side down so right side down so now I can press start and hopefully this now will join the backing piece to the rest of it And what it's going to do, it's going to sew around it and it's going to leave a tiny opening at the top. 
and that's where once you've put all the waste away and all this extra fabric and batting and you've pulled the tear away away that gap I'm not sure how well you'll see it just up here is where you turn it back through and you can either hand sew that but I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use some of that permanent webbing and just iron that in place so we'll wait for this to finish and then I'll take it out of the machine and it's you know getting towards the end of the last step now the whole design I think it said at the beginning was five minutes long so you could whip these up in no time just cut all your pieces of fabric cut your wadding and then literally sew one take the hoop out pull it out of the hoop put your next one in and while you're working your way through the process of doing the next one you can be trimming away the waste from the first one that you've sewn and have a bit of like a production line going so this is now just doing the kind of decorative edge stitch And that's it done finished so all I need to do now is lift the presser foot up release the hoop from my machine I'm just going to close this arm down on my machine so it all falls back into place so I'm going to hit the home button close out of that go back to regular sewing and it will automatically close up that arm for me and then I'm just going to flip the switch on the side of the machine to bring the arm that sticks out vertically so it closes and that way I can move the machine back out of my way I can just turn it off for a few minutes and then I can just flip you around here okay so I'm going to release this from the hoop I'm going to peel away this tear away stabiliser the openings at the top here and it tells you to trim away so you can either cut or use your ruler and rotary cutter I think I'm going to try the rotary cutter because it is going through you know several layers I'm going to line up a, a horizontal line with the bottom of my stitching and I'm going to position my quarter inch line on the outside of my sewing now you don't have to do this you could trim it down as close as you want but I'm going to go with that and just see how if that works I may just have to stand up to do this So I'm going to trim that side and do the same on this side. And trim the bottom. As I say, you can probably get, you know, closer than I am. But um I can always go back in and trim it down with scissors later. I'm going to trim the corners quite tight because that will hopefully take, you know, quite a bit of the bulk away. And I'm going to just do this bit by hand. So I'm going to come up to where the stitch line stops and then I'm just going to go straight up not across and cut that away like so and I'm going to do the same here so I'm going to come down to where that stitch is and go across and then just make those corners quite tight I'm just going to put my rotary cutter away out of the way. Now, what it says you can do, it tells you 
to flip it over and cut the wadding away to make it less bulky. So I'm just going to cut through the wadding and cut that away. I've got a bit of tearaway stabiliser there. So let's just get all this stuff off my desk. So basically I've cut the wadding away from here. So I've just got the two bits of fabric now and then all this. I might just trim this down a little bit more. So that's my back, that's my wadding and then this is... So I'm going to pull it all through now. So I'm going to go into a corner and push out a corner and then just turn it all right side out through this gap. Take your time because obviously, you know, you've got wadding and, you know, several layers of, of fabric. So just take your time, pull it all out bit by bit. It will come through. I know when we're sewing and we leave these little tiny holes, it looks, you know, you think, how on earth is that going to get through there? But they do if you take your time. You might have to just wrestle with it for a few minutes, but it, it will come out. And then I say just ease it out, push it out, pull it out, however, you know, whatever you find easier. As I say, this, this wadding, I know I keep saying it, but this wadding is actually very, very thick. Here we go. So it's, it's popping out now. I'm just going to get my... I have a couple of embossing tools that I keep in my top drawer next to me that I don't actually really use for embossing but I tend to use them if I'm sewing so this is what it's looking like so far and this is the opening so what what I'm going to do I'm going to pop in the lining first and then I'm going to fold over the outer fabric so it all tucks into there and I'm going to press it so it's nice and flat first. And then once I've got it nice and flat and all my stitches and everything are hidden, I can then put in my piece of permanent sticky that I'm going to use. So just one tiny little thread there. So I'm just going to get bring this in again and just go in and just make sure that all my corners are nice and rounded and I'm just going to take this to the ironing board and iron in these bits of waste fabric first and then I'll show you what I'm doing. So here it is and here's the opening. So I'm just going to get myself a piece of this permanent hemming web it's called. And I just picked this up in the supermarket. And again, I know I've got some of this somewhere, but I couldn't find it and it's not very expensive. So I just got some more. It's just very thin. You'll, you'll know what it is. I'm sure you will, you, all you sewers out there. So where's the opening? Keep turning the opening around and losing it. So I'm just going to measure roughly how much I need and cut a piece of this. So it's like very, very thin mesh. You can see through it. It's 10 metres on here. So, you know, it lasts for ages. And then I'm going to place this inside here as close to the edge as I can get it and as flat as I can get it. And just literally line it up with the top of this fabric. So I've got it in there. You, you're probably not even going to see it, but it's in there. So now I'm just going to take that back to the ironing board and iron that together and it will bond it together. So make sure that you've got your webbing right to the very edge of your fabric. And there it is done. That's all sealed up. That's not going to come apart. That's where it's sewn and you can't even really tell. And I've just hit it with a bit of steam on, on the back. And um, I think that's ample for a coaster with the wadding that I've used. But, you know, you might want to try it using, if your wadding's very thin or lightweight, you might want to try using the two pieces as it tells you in the instructions. So that's one. 
and I've got some more to go so I'll take a close-up picture and put it at the end and it'll also be in the thumbnail so I hope that's helped as I say I'll leave all the links to where I got this cutting uh, where I got this embroidery file from it is a paid for design I think it was an Australian site from memory but I think it's worth it um, from memory I think the Australian dollar to the UK pound I think made this about three pounds for me but when you think you've got quite a few different sizes of coaster that you can make um, or I should say there's a couple of different couple of different sizes of coaster but in all different formats but in different size hoops so you can stitch one out at a time or you can stitch two out at a time if you've got a bigger hoop so you know the the file I think is worth paying for and they come out so nice you know you don't need to do any more top stitching or anything around that now that's perfect and just put four of those together tie them up in some ribbon and you've got a lovely gift for somebody anyway i hope you like the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and i'll see you in the next video thank you